Welcome everyone. So welcome here with us with Panthera today to talk about a nice, nice small cat called the Sandcats. Before digging the subject, let me introduce myself. Uh, I am Grégory Breton, a French biologist graduated in animal behavior science. And um, yeah, I have some experience with, with wild cats, big cats and smaller cats, because I worked with 26 species uh, in, a, in a zoo in the past, and uh, I took part in the breeding of 25 species. And I'm now the managing director of Panthera uh, France, Panthera France, a French speaking branch of the organization, you know, the Global Wildcat Conservation Organization. I'm live today from France, where I'm based uh, when I'm not in the field. So now I'm going to, I'm going to talk about, about the Sandcats. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, uh, thank everyone who participated in our Giving Tuesday competition. You know, it was, it was really tight, um, but my Sandcat videos, uh, the kittens we have filmed in the wild won the challenge and um, we even got more votes than any other astonishing cats, you know, including the beautiful small tiger cubs in Nepal. So here I am, I'm ready to talk about the, the sand cat with you today and uh, also perhaps to talk about the other wild cats. So as the event is now live on Facebook, you can post your, your questions in, in the comment section actually um, and I will do my best to answer, answer you. So please feel free to, to ask any question. Obviously, before, before answering your question, I can also tell you a little bit, uh, some little background information about the species and our research team. So as you may know, there, there are about 36 to 40 different living modern cats species on our planet. And, and the sand cat is one of these species. It is actually one of the smallest cat species. Um, it is really smaller than a domestic cat, you know. The adult sand cat can weigh between 1.5 to 3 kilos. And um, yeah, we, we know really little, you know. The, the species is really close to the, to the other wild cats um, and, and, and close to the, to the domestic cat in a way, but it is still poorly known compared to the other species. Mainly to describe the sand cat, this animal is shorter, uh, smaller than a domestic cat. It has a, a broader face, uh, larger ears, and, and shorter legs, you know. And um, this is a beautiful sandy, you know, yellow to gray, light gray color. It is living in the desert in, or semi arid habitats. And um, yeah, it can live without, without water actually for, for a long time and uh, draining it directly from the blood of its prey. Um, the sand cats has no spots also. They have a, no large stripe on the, on the body, but they have brown black stripes on, on elbows uh, and, and in legs and, and on the tail. Um, and yeah, from a behavior point of view, sand cats are actually behaving differently from, from domestic cats. Yeah, what another interesting thing is that even if they are close to the domestic cats, the sand cats are different and, and the, you know, the separation occurred 2.5 million years ago. So it's, it was a long time ago, definitely. And, um, I can already see uh, some, some nice comments and questions and Erin is asking me how many sand cats are there in the Sahara, you know, and um, basically the sand cats are living in North Africa, in the Sahara, but also in the Arabic Peninsula, in Middle East and Western Central Asia. And no one knows how many sand cats are living in the wild these days, you know. Um, because they are very, very, very difficult to spot. And um, 
and um, as cryptic, you know, as a cryptic species, a nocturnal species, you have to work very hard, very hard to go and to find them in the wild. Yeah, so in the past, between four to six subspecies have been described, you know, according to the, according to the distribution area. And um, yeah, we have no idea about the validity of the subspecies. And um, yeah, basically we are, the new data are suggesting we are narrowing down the number. Okay, so Pretty is asking me today uh, how, what kind of predators are facing this animal uh, in the wild. This is a very, very good question. It depends on the location. In the North Sahara, where we are working with our team, uh, there are very, very few predators. Basically, we, we can meet fennex, we can also spot um, rupel foxes, and uh, but these species are also very small and they are not predating adult sand cats. On, on the opposite, you know, the jackals can be, can be a, a danger. But when you go toward the east, you know, in the Middle East and especially in Iran, where you have a lot of different other predators, other cat species, sand cats can be actually part of the meals of larger cats, like I would say, caracals or uh, even Persian leopards. Very good. So we are working, I'm actually not alone, you know, I am working with a team. Uh, we are a team of four people mainly. And uh, we are working in, in Morocco, south of Morocco for four years to study the sand cats there. And um, this is really a teamwork. The video you have seen live, you know, this viral video, um, it, it, it is actually the result of four years of work of our team. And uh, I should men mention our driver and local guide, Elage, who is really part of the work. And um, yeah, we have uh, also with us uh, Dr. Azizi from the, Robert Zoo, you know, in Morocco, and finally my long-term friend and colleague, Dr. Alexander Sliva, uh, a research associate of Panthera and also the curator of Colong Zoo. And we have actually initiated this program uh, in, in, in Morocco to study this unknown cat. Cher is asking a very, very good question. Um, are sand cats endangered? Have they been researched upon lately? Basically, the, the species is really, really, really unknown. And uh, for the last 20 years, we only got three or four different publication in situ in the wild on this animal. So we have very, very scarce data. And with our study in the wild, we, are, we aim to document more uh, ecological, basic ecological and behavioral data on this species. And um, yeah, it, it is really interesting because we have observed 24, 29, sorry, 29 different sand cats. We colored 13 of them and we are following them. So actually we use that kind of little, little colors. They are VHF colors, as you can see here. And, and we can track them and follow them with that big, big, big antenna, as you can see here, you know. So we, we use this antenna to receive the signal and um, we observe them at daytime, but also during nighttime. So when you want to study the sand cat in the wild, you have to work during day and night. And as many, um, uh, we need actually much more data to consider if the species is threatened or endangered or vulnerable. At this point, you know, uh, the animal is just considered by the IUCN as non-threatened and uh, it was actually recently downgraded um, from, from, you know, the near-threatened status to um, uh, the least concerned status because, you know, the desert is wide. But basically our research is showing us new data 
about this animal and the density of this animal seems to be very low. And um, yeah, um, in the future, our research might, might, might feed a new, a new revision status on the species. Okay, Ilan, Ilan is asking me a, a, a great question about their family units, you know, and um, like many cats, the sand cats are, were for a long time described as um, solitary species. And um, what we see in the wild um, is, is, is actually accurate and uh, it, is, it is similar to what has been described in the past. So it looks like the, the males and the females are living separate, you know, and they, they meet each other on, during mating periods. And then the female raise uh, kittens alone. So it, it is similar to many other smaller cat species. And Megan now is asking me a very good question. Is there a demand for these cats in the exotic pet trade? This is a very, very good question. Thank you, Megan, for asking it. Uh, basically, there are about 160 sand cats in captivity, you know, in zoos worldwide. They are part of breeding programs and we manage them uh, as a captive backup population. There is no other need of imports, you know, at this stage. But on, on the other way, some private people start to, to to try to acquire wild sand cats. And um, this is something we definitely do not encourage. So this is something we do not want to because these sand cats are, you know, very sensitive to uh, respiratory problems and they are well adapted to live actually in the desert where, where there is no humidity and where the temperatures are very high. So we, there is a demand, but, on the other way, uh, thanks to the work we are doing and because of our, all these viral things, I'm today able to tell you and explain this is, this is not really good. And um, hopefully it will help to stop the, it will hopefully stop to help to stop, sorry, the, the, the pet trade and make the people aware at custom about, about these animals, you know. Priti is asking me a very good question. Uh, do you agree with the IUCN downgrade uh, considering so little data is available on this species? This is a very good question. You know, the, the IUCN status is, um, is, is something very difficult to determine, to determine when you have very, very little data. And um, so there are rough estimates and um, personally, I would have preferred to keep the species as near threatened, but uh, I do completely understand the IUCN process. Uh, you know, we, we put people, uh, we, we increase, uh, upgrade the status of some species, and we also have to, to decrease at some point when the, the species, the status of some species, when all new data, new data are coming. In, in our situation, hopefully within the ne next five years, we will, we will have a, a better idea about the density of the animal, at least in, in South Morocco. And we will, we will bring new data and new arguments to perhaps uh, do another estimation. But at this point, I, I do understand why, why this species was down downgraded actually. Erin now is asking me, how is a warming planet affecting them? Very good. This is a very good question as well. Basically, you know, when we talk about the desert, we, we believe, we think about an empty, uh, empty landscape, you know, with no life and uh, very high temperatures. And, and um, the desert, ecology, ecosystem are, are much more complicated and sand cats, they rely on, 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 on very little water, you know, on little rainfall. If there is no rainfall, even in the desert, you know, uh, the rodents are not coming, they are not breeding. And if there is no rodent population, 
then the Senca will go, uh, will, will be uh, in a very bad situation. So the global warming problem we are facing these days, you know, the climate change on only affecting um, temperate, you know, uh, ecosystems, but also mountain ecosystems, jungle, tropical ecosystem, and also desert habitats. And, and um, you know, the Sahara Desert is there these days for, for hundreds and, and centuries, but it was not always there before. So if we destroy our planet, if we change the, cli the climate truth drastically, we will also affect these animals in the wild, in this landscape. Okay, uh, Cher Bass is asking me if uh, I believe there could be much more undiscovered cat species wandering the world. Mm, yeah, uh, thank you for asking this. There are actually these days 36 to 40 different species of cats. It depends on, on you know, on the research. Uh, in the past, we used to, to um, to, to base our taxonomy knowledge on, on fur, on skeletons, on anatomy, and, and later on a little bit on behavior. And these days for 20, 15 years, we rely on genetic. Genetic tool is a very important tool to also uh, do uh, taxonomy. And um, clearly um, we move from 36 to 40 cat species because we are reconsidering, you know, the status of the cloudy leopards. We now have two different species. This is the same with the tiger cats in, in South America. We have two different species. So in the future, there might be more changes to come uh, depending on the genetic, but discovering another unknown cat species, you know, in the wild, uh, it is for, in my opinion, really unlikely. I know there are a lot of cryptozoologists who believe there are some other unknown cats in, in tropical Africa, but in my opinion, we, we will probably discover new species because of the genetics. Alexandra is asking me, uh, how do we prevent these cats from becoming the new next trendy accessory for ignorant humans? So thank you very much for asking me this question. This is a very sensitive question, but now that the sand cats is a little bit more recognized than, than be previously than before, uh, I hope that more people in customs, in police will be aware about the difference be between a sand cat and a domestic cat. And I hope this will lead to a better recognition. And it, at some point, we will, we will protect them and we will consider them as a real species and not a cat. You know, we will avoid all confusion with, with cats. Michael asked, uh, do you, uh, about the breeding season? Yeah, do they have breeding season and is it year round given? the hot climate. So basically, uh, in, we have no idea about the breeding season and the breeding cycles in the wild because there are no study on it. This, but, you know, in captivity, the sand cats are bred for many years now and most of the animals are actually, um, the, most of the female are giving birth between January and March in the United States, in Europe, also in the Middle East. And when they, they fail to breed uh, during this first quarter of the year, then they, they, can, they can give birth in, in later on in July or August. In the world, a lot of things are, remain to, to, to be discovered. Basically, we saw the three kittens you, you, you loved on this video, and they were probably born between middle, February, end of February. So it, 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 it is uh, similar to what we observed in the wild. Okay, Willow asked me, uh, so he, he comments and he said, uh, I work with captive sand cats for many years and one of the fact we learn about them, what they are hard to find because they bury their feces, but also they close their eyes so light 
won't reflect their eye shine. Is it true or, and if so, how do you spot them in the well, in the dark? Thank you, Willow. Thank you very much for your question. So it is completely true. Um, in captivity, they, they actually, like domestic cats, they bury their, their, their feces. And in, in the wild, with our team, with the, you know, the, the Sarah, Sarah Sencap uh, working team, we, do, we never, at this point, we never saw any, any fecal sample from any sand cats. We try, but it's, it's really difficult. So we, we look for them at night, and the, the main, the main um, key of the success is to drive and spot lamp at night. So I can show you a spot lamp. I have one here. This is what we are using, you know, and we try to, um, to catch the eye shine of all the predators we see in Morocco, so the Fenex, the Rupert foxes, and from that distance, we are trying to um, distinguish and, and identify the sand cats to try to follow the specimen and try to, to actually basically capture it, to color it, so that's the way we work. Um, Okay, very good. There are many, many questions. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's unbelievable. Uh, thank you very much. So Natalie is asking me, do you know some threat that might wait on them? Um, yeah, I think I've already talked about the threat. One threat is the pet trade, you know, and we do not encourage any people to try to buy any sand cap. Uh, another threat is the hybridization, and it gives me the opportunity to talk about the, the small cat um, hybridization problem. You know, smaller cats are, um, are, you know, are living in the wild. They don't rely on human, but on the opposite, we have domesticated the African wild cats about 8,000 to 10,000 years ago in northeastern Africa and Middle East. And uh, there is a confusion, you know, between the domestic cats and all the breed we have created with this unnatural or at artificial selection. And on the opposite, there are all these small cats, wild small cat species. And these days we are facing a big problem, you know, human, um, some humans, some people are trying to crossbreed these different different animals. They are trying to create new breeds. So to 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 put some yeah have a, a shocking comparison. You know, the, um, these days we can buy Bengal cats, savan, savannah cats. They came from breeding with Bengal leopard cat and several cat, several. This is an African middle sized cat. And this is a real, real, real problem. And my shocking comparison is as simple. Um, I, compare, I, I compare with the great ape. Just look at the ev evolutionary tree of the great apes. And we humans separated from chimpanzees and gorillas uh, about six or eight million years ago, just like the, the wild cats and the domestic the, the wild cat lineage and the other wild cats. So basically, when you try to mix a domestic cat with a Seville or with a Bengal cat and now with a sand cat, you, are try, you create hybrids and they are similar, you know, it is exactly the, the same scale as if we are mating with chimpanzees or gorillas and we keep the babies, you know. So, Humans are hybridized, uh, you know, they, they are, we are, we are in nowadays mixing all these genes, genes between the domestic cats and the wild cats. And this is a real, real issue. And this is something we should address. Okay, Roman is asking me, what you supposed to do on emergency basis to be done for their survival? Contrary to the big cats I have behind me, you know, the tiger or the snow leopard or even the lion, um, sand cats are not as threatened as these big cats or even the fishing cats to, uh, to some extent. So 
there is no emergency for the SENCAT. The, 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 the work to do is to better communicate and to educate people to distinguish between domestic cats and sand cats and try to avoid any pet trade. It started already five years ago, you know, so our work nowadays is, is there and our communication is, to, is there to explain we should try to avoid um, any, any, any pet trade. We should stop this before it is spreading too widely uh, worldwide. Any other question? There are a lot of a lot of questions coming. So let let me just show you one thing. Uh, very very interesting very interesting thing. Uh, I have displayed you. I've show, shown you this little little color, and this is that kind of technology all the wildcats biology are using to study the smaller cats for thirty years. So these colors are very very important. They are like a beacon in the dark, and they are um, the tool we use to follow these animals. And just to, for a comparison point of view, let me show you another, another color. This one is for a bigger cat, you know, for a jaguar or a tiger. So th there are different mechanisms, but for, for the small cat, we still rely on the VHF. There is no GPS technology available for the small cats. And um, yeah, I, I can have some question about them. Um, you know, the welfare, and we always try to find the cats and free them before the end of the battery. And, um, but these colors are not, not impairing the animal to live their lives. This is very important. This is used for a long, long time on black footy cat in Africa. Uh, Alexander Sliva, my, my colleague and, and co-leader in the program, is studying the, the, the black footy cat for 25 years now. And um, we have a lot of uh, cats living with these colors and we remove them and the antenna they it doesn't impair the, impair them to hunt or to mate you know so Elan is asking me what made you decide to focus on sand cats what drew you to them uh, it is yeah let me give you some background information many years ago Alexander and myself we, we met actually yeah um, the story is quite quite funny because when I was a student at the university, I was already reading some publication or short notes he was writing. So we met later on and we decided to work together we tr to try to study some unknown cats. So we travel in different places around the world, um, in Sri Lanka, for example, or I, I visited him in, in South Africa. and. Um, we uh, one day we heard about um, some sand cat sightings in the south of Morocco, so it it appealed us, and we said, "Oh, why not? Sand cats are lovely. We we'll, we actually both love the species because of its uh, you know characteristic unique unique uniqueness." And we went there. So we we bought we bought flight tickets, and we went into the desert, and and we saw sand cats. It was not very easy. Huh? We found them actually at the very, very um, last moment of our trip, during the last night, actually, just like the kittens, we saw the kittens on our last night of the expedition. So it was very, very uh, funny. We saw these sand cats, and then we decided to, to ask for uh, the authorization, you know, to color and study the cat in the country. So we, we, we contacted Rabat Zoo um, and, and the authority in Morocco, the Au Commissariat aux Eaux et Forêts et à la lutte contre la désertification in order to get all these research permits. And, and this is the way the story started four years ago, actually. Rick is asking me now a question about publication. So I read you the question. If and when you publish any finding regarding sand cats, do you withhold the location of the animal you study in order to protect them from the pet and animal trade? Yeah, that's a very good comment. In, in the publication, we mention where we work, we show a global map, with, but we don't pin the places where we are working. So this is, yeah, this is correct, true, and yeah, this is the way we, we deal it, yeah. Thank you very much for your, your question. 
pretty now is, uh, I think we pronounce it pretty. During your research on sand cats, have you discovered any other interesting things, whether about the species or the environment or anything else? Yes, we are discovering really nice uh, things about the species. Um, actually, these animals are driving us crazy. It, to make it simple, we have uh, about 13, yeah, you know, 10-ish colored cats these days. And they are spreading and moving in every direction and not only in the vicinity. Compared to the other smaller cats we know, compared to the black bully cat or the European white cats or the Geoffrey's cats, the sand cats are covering large distances and um, they even travel at night uh, long, long distances, straight, straight, you know, straight lines. They can travel 15 kilometers, uh, even more. And uh, this is this is crazy because when you meet the cat during the day, you find the cat with your antenna. You know, I have an antenna here. When you you find the cat with your antenna, there is no guarantee you can find the same cat later on. Just six or seven hours later, it could have moved really far and so you have to look look in every direction and um sometimes it's really really difficult to relocate them so yeah we we have a lot of interesting uh, uh data and i can already already tell you that our study area is expanding and it is approximately the size of rhode island now in the us or the size of the Staffordshire in the UK or the Département du Rhône in France. So it's a large, large area and this is crazy. We are driving and searching for the cats and most of the time we fail to, to find them. There is another very, very good comment there. Let me, let me read it. Yeah, okay. There are many other questions or do you have any other question? We are, yeah, I think approaching the end of the talk today. Um, so it's time for one more final question, something interesting I should have, uh, I can answer. Uh, if you have any idea, please, please come and join us and ask me anything. It can be in French also, you know, for the people here, I can read you. Um, if not, you know, I can move and, and explain what we are doing. So Cathy is asking me, the markings on the sand cats are really distinct. The two black lines on each front legs. Do you know why they evolved to have these and what their pur purpose is? This is a very, very good question. I have no idea. Definitely, uh, there are, you, can, you can actually, uh, you can draw a lot of hypotheses, but um, it depends on the sand cats, you know. Some sand cats in Morocco, especially in, in North Africa, they are really well marked. They have black stripes on the, on the front and back legs. On the opposite, uh, on the Eastern distribution area, uh, the sand cats uh, are uh, grayish and the, and the marking is, is, is lighter or sometimes even disappear. So there are definitely some I would say some individual phen phenotypical uh, gene expression. And um, yeah, I have no idea yet why the, these sand cats have such distinctive markings. Rick is asking me, you mentioned you have a small team, how it is funded? This is a very good question. Thank you very much for asking it. Initially we started, um, with our own money, you know, with our own funds. We went there, we bought our tickets, we paid the, the fuel, the petrol, all the food. And when we go in the field, you know, we have no internet, there is no electricity, no bathroom. We don't pay any hotel room. We are actually uh, in the desert. We are living in tents and like nomads and we make our own food there. So we, the costs are, are low and it is mainly, you know, 40% of the cost is connected, is related to our equipment. 
and the rest is divided between the food, between the petrol, between with the salary of the of the of the of the kittens. Um, so yeah, um, and um, you know, in Panthera, the, the global wildcat organization I'm working with, uh, we have seven programs for the larger cats, but we also have a small cat action funds. Uh, and this is where you can actually help us. This is where you can send and donate some money to support small cat conservation. And um, yeah, in, in the future, uh, we will definitely let you know about what all findings definitely and uh, about the foundings. But um, if you want to sponsor us, it is the way to do it. Nadine is asking me, okay, thank you very much in French. Merci beaucoup pour toutes ces explications. Thank you very much for all these explanations. What are your future projects? We want to carry on. We would like to carry on uh, traveling there. I was with Alexander last week in Morocco. We signed the agreement to carry on the, the study, you know, with the Moroccan authorities. So our, our next move will be to travel again in the location and find and carry on to study our cats. So that's, that's a, the most interesting part for us, the scientists, the researchers, you know. So that's the next plan. And depending on the funding, we will probably start to, to, to communicate a little bit more uh, in the location and in the city. We might perhaps produce a leaflet, you know, an information leaflet to explain how to distinguish small sand cats uh, and domestic cats. And we will encourage people to keep the sand cats in the desert. Okay, so yeah, there are, there are less questions now. I think we, we, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna close the session now. Uh, I would like to definitely thank you all for listening to me, to, to join us. Um, I have introduced you to, to Panthera and um, yeah, please visit our website. If you love this video, you can actually later on, you can download it and you can share it with anybody. So please visit our website. This is panthera.org. And for the French speaking audience, you, you have a French page. You will find my face again and we can talk together. If you want to help us, please, visit this webpage and also follow us on Facebook. Thank you very much for listening and uh, I hope you enjoy it. And yeah, keep, keep, stay, stay tuned, keep in touch. More, more videos are coming with all our expert, expert worldwide. Thank you very much.